All right, we're going to talk about video cards. So video cards. We have several different types of graphics cards we can talk about. We have graphics cards, we have graphics accelerator cards, or graphics adapters. They're all different names for video cards. Um, this particular card that you see up here is a pretty beefy card. It's got a really strong processor, which generates a lot of heat. So on top of that processor, you have this passive heat sink, the radiator fins, and then you have a cooling shroud with this fan that's going to suck the air past that to cool that processor. Um, these are usually done as an add-on card. Um, or they can also be integrated into your motherboard as part of the integrated circuitry. That's called embedded graphics or embedded video. And this will allow you to create the images that you're going to see on your display or your monitor. Uh, you can do this through either PCI Express, PCIe, AGP, or even the old school PCI slots. Um, again, AGP and PCI those are very old technologies. Um, the quality of the graphics compared to today's stuff is not going to run well over that. So if you're going to do something for a gaming machine, you're going to be using PCIe, and that's what most of the things are going to be using these days. If you have a low-end desktop, kind of like a, a cheap, inexpensive desktop, they're going to use integrated graphics instead. They're not going to use a dedicated card. This is fine for your everyday use if you're going to do word processing and surfing the web and watching videos. But if you want to play some really cool games, they're not usually going to handle the, the amount of load that you're going to try to put on it. So you're going to need a discrete graphics card uh, or an external card like this. Uh, if you notice this one here at the bottom, what does that look like to you guys? What kind of graphics card? PCIe X16, right? You can tell by the long uh, nature of that expansion card slot. Here's another example of a card. Um, this one you can see has a radiator also on there, it's an Asus card. The processor's underneath the Asus logo. Um, and then they've got this with a uh, cooling system capability on it. So how do you cool these graphics cards? Well, these cards will get really, really hot because they're doing the most complex mathematical problems that the computer is doing. These things are working harder than your actual CPU does. Um, it's involved in doing all the 3D graphics rendering. And so they use these things called a graphics processing unit. And they even have their own dedicated memory on these cards as well. They use passive heat sinks if you want quiet operations and for lower power cards. Remember, passive heat sinks can't take away as much heat as an active heat sink. Passive means it's not doing much, it's just sitting there and it's that heat shroud. It doesn't use any cooling fans. If you put on a cooling fan or the shroud, it'll get you more cooling, but it's going to be noisier in operation. And some of the older cards, they didn't have any of this at all because the processing was so minimal that it would just rely on the case fans to cool the card itself. How do you install a card? Um, just like you do with any other expansion card, uh, you're going to end up physically installing the card. You're going to delete the, the drivers for the old card. You're going to shut down your computer. You're going to use your ESD protections like your wrist strap. You're going to install the new card by pushing it into the slot. You're not going to do like the guy in the bottom right here and touch the card with your hand onto the circuitry. That's a bad thing to do. You want to do it like the one on the left where you're installing it, touching it by the edges. Uh, you'll also then attach the monitor cable to it and be able to turn on the computer. And once the computer boots, you have to install the drivers for that specific graphics card because Windows doesn't know how to deal with that particular graphics card out of the box for most of the graphics cards. So in the box, when you bought the uh, graphics card, it'll come with a CD or DVD with the drivers you need to install. Uh, you also need to configure your BIOS for the card to be installed. If you're using AGP, you would actually go in the BIOS and say this is a 1x, 2x card or a 4x, 8x card. With, with a PCIe, you don't need to do that. It's automatically configured for you. Uh, for primary VGA and BIOS or primary graphics adapter, if you have onboard video, sometimes you'll have to turn that off in the BIOS so it'll recognize the secondary card that you're putting in. So if you started with a low-end system that had integrated uh, graphics, you'll want to turn off the onboard video so that it can use this graphics card that you're putting in to give you that gaming you want. Um, and you can also give more or less memory to the graphics aperture through the BIOS if needed. Um, but again, if you're using an external card like this, it's going to have all its own memory dedicated, so you won't need to do that for the BIOS. And again, don't touch the card like that. <laughs> so what kind of connectors do you have? The three most common you're going to find on graphics cards these days is still VGA, which is the old analog system we've used to use, DVI-D, which was the first digital format, and then the new HDMI, which is what you usually use if you're going to output to a TV screen. Uh, VGA, again, is analog. It uses a 15-pin D-shaped connector. DVI is your digital video interface. Uh, there's three different types. There's DVI-A, DVI-D, and DVI-I. DVI-A is an analog version, which doesn't make sense since it's digital video interface analog. It's kind of an oxymoron. Um, 
you have DVI-D, which is fully digital, which is what's being displayed up here, and you have DVI-I, which is an integrated one, which actually would support the digital and the analog. And the difference is if you see two dots over that dashed line and two dots below the dashed line, it would be a DVI-I. I'll show you guys a picture of that later as well. Um, and HDMI is over here on the right. It's what your HDTVs use. It supports um, 1080, 1080p, 1080i, uh, which is 1080 lines of resolution on the screen. Um, on a computer monitor, we use 1920 wide, semi-pixels, by 1080 tall. Uh, the nice thing about HDMI is it can carry your video and your sound, so everything over one cable. These other two, they only carry video. So if you want sound, you're going to have to do that through either a Toslink connector like the SPDIF connector we talked about or the analog um, audio jacks. With HDMI, it'll carry digital audio and digital video for you. And there's a new type called Type B that supports this funky amalgamation of letters, the WQUXGA, which is a format that specifies that it is actually 3840 by 2400 pixels in resolution. So it's even higher quality than our standard HD TVs. Not as good as a 4K TV, but better than HDTV. Most people are still using Type A uh, 1920 by 1080 as the standard. Other types of connectors that are a little less common, you won't see as often. Uh, Macintosh really, really loves uh, DisplayPort. Um, all their laptops have it. There's a picture of my laptop, and right there is the DisplayPort. It's a funny shaped little uh, D-shaped type connector. Um, it gives you performance that's very similar to HDMI. As you can see, it can support many different resolutions, including nearly that uh, HDMI Type 2, but the Type A is supported by it. Um, if you have a Macintosh laptop, that's what you're going to get, and you'll need an adapter to convert it to something else. For instance, my laptop, I'm using DisplayPort. It then changes it with this dongle to a VGA, which is then connected to a projector. I also have ones that will connect it to HDMI. I have ones that will connect it to DVI-D, depending on the, the place I'm actually hooking into. The next thing we have is an older technology. It supports what's called ETV, uh, EDTV, which was better than old TV, but not as good as HDTV. Uh, it's what's called 720p, because it only has 720 lines of resolution. It is a high-definition analog signal, um, and it comes in red, blue, and green cables. You can see them here in the bottom. You have the red, blue, and green, and this is what the first HDTV boxes, set-top boxes from like Comcast and Verizon gave you before they started using HDMI. Not very common to see these on a computer anymore. Um, they were very popular in the early 2000s, and nowadays pretty much everybody's gone to either DisplayPort, HDMI, or DVI. Um, an even older technology than that is S-Video. Uh, if you had a uh, VHS player back in the day, uh, you had an S-Video connector. And if you look here on the screen, I have a picture of it for you right here. Basically, it was a four-pin connection inside here, and the cable would be a single cable that would bring it in, and that was just for video. There was no audio over that either. This was also labeled sometimes as TV out, and again, it was very popular on VHS players, um, not as popular on things like video game systems or even on computers. Uh, composite is the lowest quality. It is the RCA cable. It's 480p, which is standard definition television, um, if you're lucky. <laughs> it is a single cable, usually yellow. As you can see here, the yellow video cable. Um, and if you're familiar with like the old like Nintendo systems, when you got the three cables came out of the back, you had the white and the red for the sound, left and right audio, and the yellow for the video. That's what we're talking about. That's a composite cable. The reason why it's called composite is because all the video signal is composed onto one single cable. When we talk about component, it actually is broken out into red, blue, and green. It brings out those three channels of color, so you have three cables making up the signal. And that's how you get a higher quality image because you have three cables to carry the load. Again, for most computers nowadays, none of these are real popular with the exception of DisplayPort on the Macintoshes. You'll see those very frequently. They have Mini DisplayPort and DisplayPort. So, which of the following connectors uses a single RCA-style connector? DVI, RGB, VGA, or composite video? Composite video, we just said that, right? That's that yellow connector, really old-style, standard-definition TV. 